Inside the back contract, the stability fee per collateral is updated by the function called fold. This function can only be called by an authorized account. The contract that is responsible for calling the function fold on the back contract is a contract called jug. Here you can see the function called drip, and inside here, it calls bat.fold. So in this video, we will rewrite the contract jug. First, I'll copy this contract and then paste it inside my code editor. Next, before we rewrite the contract, I'm going to first run forge FMT. So inside my terminal, I'll type forge FMT. Then going back to the contract. Okay, so let's begin. First, we have the interface batvike, and it's going to call the function IOKS. Remember, IOKS was a mapping from bytes32 to the struct called IOK, which had some information about the collateral. And then we have the function fold that's going to update the stability fee inside the back contract. I'm going to remove all of this and then I'm going to import the bat interface. Inside our contract, we call this ICDP engine from go one up, go to interfaces, and then import ICDP engine.sol. We're going to be using this ICDP engine interface in replacement of the bat like interface. Next, inside the bat contract, I see some code for authorization. So we already have uh, another contract for this, and this is called alt. And this is from bib, and the contract name is alt. And then we'll say jog is alt, and then remove the code for authorization. Okay, next we have a struct called ilk. So I'll put the original name here, and let's rename this to collateral. Okay, and then we have two fields. The first one is called duty, and it is collateral specific per second stability fee contribution. The unit is rate. Let's call this fee, stability fee. And we'll call this row will be time of last drip. Let's call this updated at. Updated at. Okay, and then next we have the mapping from bytes32 to this struct collateral, and it's called IOKS. Let's rename this to collaterals. Then it stores the interface for the back contract. We rename this as ICDP engine. And we'll rename the bat state variable as CDP engine. Next, we have the address for val. The val refers to the contract that will receive both the debt and the surplus that is made from the DAI stablecoin system. Let's rename this to DS engine. DS will stand for debt surplus. Okay, next we have a state variable called base, and this is global per second stability fee contribution. Later on, you'll see that to calculate the stability for a collateral, this base will be added to this collateral specific per second stability fee. So let's rename this base to base fee. Okay, so that completes the state variables. Moving on, we have the constructor. It's going to take in the address of the back contract. We will rename this as CDP engine. And then it sets words of message sender to one, meaning that the deployer of the contract is authorized to call some of the authorized functions. This is all handled inside the contract dot. So we can simply remove this. Okay, next we have some math functions. I'm going to remove all of this since I already put this inside a library called math. And then I'll explain what's going on over here. So let's go to the math library. And the function that I want to explain is called R power. This is a function that efficiently calculates the compound interest. So for example, let's say that we have an interest rate of R, which compounds every second. So then we will have the compound interest, let's say after n seconds, will be one plus R raised to the n. You can simply run a for loop to calculate this, but however, it's not an efficient way to calculate it. The R power function calculates this number in a more efficient way. The way it's calculated, I've explained in another video, which I will put a link in the descriptions. So for the input, it's going to take in three inputs, X, N, and B. X will be the number to take the N power of. So what you're going to see is X to the N. However, since Solidity doesn't support decimals, what we actually need to do is this x will be multiplied by some base. For example, let's say that x is equal to 
1.01. We want to represent x as 1.01. But of course, solidity doesn't have decimals. So what you would do is multiply this by, let's say, 10 to the 18. So you would get 1.01 times 10 to the 18. But now, if you multiply x, for example, raised to the power of n, where let's say n is equal to 2, then what you'll get is, let's just do the math. So you'll get this part, and then multiply this again, and we get that this is equal to 1.01 .01 raised to the power of 2. There's one over here and another one over here. But also, we're multiplying the base 10 to the 18 raised to the power of 2. But what we actually wanted to calculate was 1.01 .01 raised to the power of 2, and then multiply by one of these bases. So to do this, we need to pass in a base, and this function inside here makes sure that after it's done calculating, it returns a single base. So what this function is going to return is x divided by b raised to the power of n and then multiply by b so that only one of the base is returned. Okay, let's go back to the jug contract. So let's import the math library since we're going to need it. You'll just import the whole math library. So say import math and I made a spelling error over here. So I'll change this to lib. Okay, moving on. So we have the first function called init. It can only be called by an authorized account. For the input, it's going to take in the IOK, the identifier of the collateral. Let's rename this to call type. And the struct IOK, let's rename this to collateral. So it's going to get the collateral. I'll rename this I also to call. It's going to get the collateral stored in the mapping collaterals. And make sure that duty is equal to zero. Duty, we renamed it as fee. And then it's going to set fee to 1 and row, row we named it as updated at also to now, which will be block dot timestamp. But what is this 1? What is it referring to? Back inside the jug contract, we can see that 1 refers to 10 to the 27. In MakerDAO language, this is ray. This constant is defined inside the math library that we wrote. I have a constant defined as rate. So going back, let's rename this to rate. And that completes the function init. It checks that phi is equal to zero and then initializes the phi to ray and sets updated at to the current timestamp. Okay, next we have a function called file. Inside that code, we renamed all of the function called file to set. And then for IOK, this will be call type. And then I'll rename all of what with key. So the function set can only be called by an authorized account. And there are three variations. Set passing in the inputs collateral type, key data. The function set passing in key data. And the function set again passing key and data. Here the data type is unit 256 and here the data type is address. So the first function set, it's going to update the collateral. You can see here that it's going to update the fee for the collateral. First, it checks that block.timestamp is equal to the current timestamp that was updated, updated at. And if the timestamp where the last drip was called is equal to the current timestamp, then it allows us to update the fee. Else, it will revert. Okay, so that's the first function. Next, we have the function that will update the base fee. Okay, we don't need to make any change here. And then the last function set, we can update the DS engine the address of the DS engine. Okay, and finally, we have the function drip. This is the most interesting function inside the jug contract. What this function will do is calculate the compounded interest for the stability fee so far, and then call the function fold. First, it checks that block.timestamp is greater than or equal to collateral call type dot row. Row will be the last timestamp that this function drip was called. So let's rename this to update it at Next, it gets the collateral from the CDP engine, and it gets the second input. What is the second input? Let's check the interface for the CDP engine. So I'll search for a file icdp engine and look for the struct. So here it is. The second input is the rate accumulator. Okay, so going back, the second input will be the rate accumulator. So first, let's just get the whole collateral, icdp engine dot collateral memory, I'll call this call. 
is equal to CDP engine collaterals identified by call type. And then this prev will be call.rate accumulator, the current rate accumulator that is stored in this collateral. Okay, and the next part of the code I think is the most important part of the code inside the function jug. And this code over here calculates the compounded stability fee. It's nested in a lot of functions, so let's go through them one at a time. Let's start with the inner part, which is the easiest to understand. Calls a function call that. I move the function add into the library math. So we'll call math.add. And then it's going to add the base fee with the collateral specific fee. For example, you can think about the base fee, let's say is 5%, and the collateral specific fee is additional 1%. Then 5% plus 1% will be 6%. Remember here we're calculating x and then cancel out the base and then raise the power of n and then we want the base back so we multiply by the base. So this will be x and this will be n and this will be the base and 1 will be rate. Okay, so this is x. We take x to the nth power. Now will be the current timestamp, block dot timestamp, and we're calculating the compound interest from the previous time the function drip was called, update it at. And ray will represent one in this calculation. So I'll also call math.rpower here, and then afterwards it does a math.mall. math.mall with the previous rate accumulator. The previous rate accumulator is stored in call.rateacc. This part of the code calculates the compound interest since the last time the function drip was called, and then multiplies it to the previous rate accumulator to calculate the new rate accumulator. Okay, and then we pass this rate accumulator to the function fold by calling bat.fold. Passing in call type, here DS engine will be the receiver of the profit that was made by the increase and in the stability fee. And then next it calls a function called diff. I put this function inside math. And what it will do is calculate the difference between the new rate accumulator and the previous rate accumulator. And after the function fold is called, at this point the stability fee is now updated inside the back contract. And the last part of the code is to update the timestamp for this collateral type. Set it equal to block.timestamp. That completes the code rewrite for the contract jug. Let's try compiling this contract. Inside my terminal I'll type forge build. Okay, so I see several errors. So let me go fix one at a time. The first one is easy. Fold should be update rate cc. Okay, the next error is over here. Int 256 is not implicitly convertible to expected type un 256. So going back here, the function that I need to call is called rmol. And the last error that I see is I'm calling a function called math.add. If I check the library and then search for a function called add, the function add is used to add un256 with int256. But over here, both base fee and the fee for the collateral is unit 256 so I can remove this function and simply add these two numbers. Okay, let's try compiling the contract again. Okay, and our contract compiled. Okay, I see one last error. I can remove the public from the constructor, so I'll go do that right now. Okay, and then let's try compiling again and the contract compiles successfully. 